we are reading about Israel and God's people, the church of that time. And he's, the church at that time is being pastored by a 98-year-old man who somewhere lost his touch with God. He got caught up in just the things that made him happy. He pastored a church that is now lukewarm. In fact, the Bible says that his two sons, because Levi was a priest, his two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, both priests, would, they brought such much, so much shame on the house of the Lord that they literally had no fear of God anymore as ministers and, and they would lay in the door of the tabernacle and have a sexual relationship with prostitutes with no fear of God. That's how far the church of that time had gotten. Whenever you do not have godly leaders in the house of the Lord, whatever is in the leader is going to get in the people. And I don't, I, don't, I don't know how you get to a place that you can rule the house of God and the sin that's going on in there doesn't bother you at all. In fact, God, in fact, God got, Eli got to a place that he could not hear the Lord anymore. And when God wanted to talk to him, he could not talk to him. He had to get another prophet that would come and say, thus saith the Lord, because Eli could not recognize the voice of God anymore. In fact, the Bible says about his sons that they lived in such sin and degradation that God sought the opportunity to kill them. And so it's in this setting that this woman who at a young age came into this family of Levites and she marries Phineas. And she's probably excited about that I'm part of my husband as a priest. And she does not, either Phineas at that age had not yet become the man that he eventually became, or else it was hid well. And over time, Phineas's wife, or in fact, the Bible does not tell us her name, but her heart began to be broken because she began to see what she had married. And she had to deal with the adulterous affairs of her husband. And she had to deal with a church that is so full of sin, there's no move of God anymore. And she watches all of this stuff, and she, lit she literally has no recourse but to keep quiet. And it's in this setting that as she watches and she begins to lose hope, the church is in ruins, her nation has no hope. And in this time, the Bible says that God begins to set some things in motion and a prophet comes in. You will notice that every time God gets ready to change the direction of a nation, he always looses prophetic voices. This is one of the reasons why America right now is at odds with prophets that are speaking the word of the Lord is because they do not want the change that's coming by the power of the Holy Ghost. And so it's in this setting that the enemy comes in and he assaults her mind, he assaults her spirit. And, and over time, the decades of time, and, and uh, her, of course we know she dies in childbirth, but the scripture also tells us that she had other children before the last one. And so she's raising children in this environment. And one day an unknown prophet comes in and she can hear him prophesying to Eli and he's saying, thus saith the Lord, because you have honored your sons more than you've honored me. Judgment's coming on your house. I'm going to cut off the posterity of your house and your young men will die in a young age and I'm going to remove your bloodline from the kingdom of the Lord. And you can feel a chill in the air as, she re as he releases this word of the Lord in that house and yet there is no change isn't it amazing that we in this nation have gotten to such a place that we cannot hear the warnings of the word of the Lord anymore that we have become so 
debased in the house of God. A while back they were talking about there are churches that instead of having regular service they have wrestling rings set up. And then other places they have all kinds of goopy stuff set up. Whenever you have to bring entertainment into the house of the Lord to keep the people, it means the presence of God has left. And whenever the presence of God leaves, then demon spirits come in the house. And you may have a building full of people, but they will be bound by cocaine, pornography, divorce, discouragement, suicide, drugs, alcohol. But where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And see, God will put up with stuff for just so long, and then He will say, Enough is enough. And He will release a word in the atmosphere of thus saying the Lord one day the Bible says Israel went to war and the battle did not fare well for Israel and in that day 30,000 men died and the Ark of the Covenant has been captured and eventually a man comes back and he comes into the temple and there Eli is sitting, a heavy man who cannot see. It's interesting, he, though he could not see in the natural, he could not see in the spirit either. If a prophet came to me and said, thus saith the Lord, I'm bringing judgment on you and your house because of this, this, and this, how fast could I get on my knees? and just pursue the mercy of God because the mercy of God is a wonderful thing. And the young man comes in and Eli says, what's going on? He says, Eli, he says, Israel has been defeated today and the Philistines have overcome them and the, your two sons have both died and the Ark of the Covenant has been captured. And the moment that he heard that, the Bible says that he fell over backwards off of the throne that he was sitting on or the chair. And when he hit the ground, because he was a heavy man, his neck broke and he died right there. All of these theories about that God will never judge leaders in the house of the Lord and God's just all mercy. Remember this, Eli died in a building that held the mercy seat. And Yusa died right in front of the mercy seat because mercy to God is important and it is precious to him. And he fell over dead and Phineas's wife is in the room and when she hears the sound, she is great with child somewhere around nine months and as she begins to hear the news that that Israel has been defeated 30,000 men have died leaving perhaps 15 to 20,000 widows that day in Israel and not only that your husband and your brother-in-law are both dead and then on top of that the ark of god has been captured and when she heard that the bible says that all of a sudden travail hit her trauma came on her she could not handle what she was hearing and contractions began to come and she went into labor and as the midwives gathered around her and they were telling her listen it's going to be all right you're bearing a, you've had a baby boy the Bible says a boy was born and as this baby comes out of her womb she is so full of despair she is so full of discouragement hopelessness has such got a hold of her my pastor's dead that was backslid my my husband is dead who was an adulterer my nation is in trouble and the ark of God has been captured and the enemy robbed her of her hope 
And I believe that that despair got a hold of her and it began to cause her to go into labor. And when she gave forth this baby, they held that baby to her. They said, look, in the midst of your despair, you have birthed life. You've got a healthy boy. And the Bible said that the enemy had so got a hold of her mind that she turned her head, would not look at her child. And she said, name him Ichabod, for the glory of God has departed. And in that moment, she gave up hope and she died. We can parallel this story to some degree to the time that we're in. Never have we seen such despair for the people of God as we have seen in the last couple of years. Listen to the news. And if you listen to the news, one story after another keeps coming. And you realize that the enemy has stolen our nation, that we cannot say the Pledge of Allegiance or quote the Ten Commandments. They're ruled illegal on the front porch of our courts. We no longer, hallelujah, are able to do so many things in the house of God. Homosexuality is rapidly trying to replace our nation's uh, uh, way of culture in the hour that we're living in it's all right to kill our babies church depend depend our attendance is on the decline suicides at an all-time high depression is everywhere and if you're not careful if you can't hear by the spirit you start allowing the demon that got a hold of that woman that while she's giving birth to life the saying gets a hold of her and says it's over there is no hope I'm going to entitle this message today it is not over and God is not done now, can I tell you it doesn't matter if the Philistines have won the battle it doesn't matter if our battlefield right now is littered with slain men and women it doesn't matter if the Bible has become silent it does not matter if our preachers are drunk on money prosperity and only know how to talk about good feeling speeches it it does not matter if hell rages and men imagine a vain thing. God is God and he lives in a different world. He is not bound by your rules. He is not bound by my rules. Before there was ever a demon, there was God. Before there ever was a devil, there was God. Before there was ever sin, there was holiness. Before there was ever abortion, there was life. When it's all said and done, it will not be the enemy that triumphs but it will be God Almighty to him belongs glory honor power dominion forever and ever it does not matter if it looks like we've lost if we buried our husband if we thrown in the towel God is not done For Christians today, we are experiencing pain over the condition of our nation, the apostasy of the church, and great personal suffering and loss. There's no doubt. We may look at these things. We are not in despair. Yes, our nation is suffering. Yes, I'll be the first one to admit it looks like the devil's winning. I'm not going to refute that. But I can also tell you this. We are not of those who have given in and thrown in the towel and said we might as well join them because we cannot fight them. We will never bow down 
to the spirit of Baal. I am grieved over the corruption and the sin in our church, in the nation, but we will never, ever concede to the enemy. And can I tell you that the problem is in America right now, we've had too many people that were just floating along on the prosperity of our nation and they were not spiritually aware of what was going on in the atmosphere. And in an hour that you think not, the Bible says God will show up. But can also tell you this, that the enemy likes to camouflage his plans. And in an hour when you think not, I told you last week, the devil fights dirty. The pain that people are dealing with right now is indescribable. So I seen recently a, a mother said, my son had a disease that caused indescribable pain. And at the age of 27, he took his life because he could not deal with the pain. She said, my husband is dead. And she said, my 22-year-old daughter now has the same disease that he has. And she cannot take the medicine for the pain because it would kill her. But she said she writes poems about the glory of God. And she has the sweetest spirit that there is. We have people in this church right now that are in stage four cancer. We have people in this body right now that have indescribable things going on in their lives that most of us could not wrap our minds around. And we deal with these things on a daily basis. The emails that come in, you would not believe what's going on with people. And so we deal, uh, we deal with a lot of different things in our lives. And the enemy comes in and he begins to assault our spirits. And he begins to try to come against us. And um, the pain that most of believers are, are dealing with today, there are the pain of children who are living in sin. I dealt with a father this, this week on the phone who's dealing with a child who's left their spouse and is now living in homosexuality and says, tell me, what do I do? And all I could tell him was my own story, and this is what you do, and this is how God triumphs. But see, what Phineas's wife missed, yeah. what the enemy robbed her of, was that she forgot that she was living in a house that had a Samuel in it. See, all she could see was an Eli. All she could see was an adulterous husband who was a preacher that was having extramarital affairs. All she could see was the apathy of the nation. And she forgot that there was a Samuel in the house. He may have been young. In fact, I have to believe that he was a young man when she came into the family. And at times she would hear him somewhere in the temple talking to God. And she got so sidetracked by what the enemy enemy was doing in her life that she did not realize that God looked down and when he said I cannot fix Eli then I'm going to birth another one in the temple that when I'm ready to remove Eli I'll have somebody to step into this place. I declare this to you by the spirit of the Lord long before this mess happened in our nation politically and, and morally long before the church in America got drunk on prosperity and money. God birthed a Samuel company in this nation, a no-name generation that is unrecognized and unnamed. And God hid them for such a time as this. And now all of a sudden, I hear the sound of a Samuel beginning to rise up in the Holy Ghost while hell says, go ahead and die. While hell wants you to 
stand at the gravestone of your past while hell wants to tell you they failed you they weren't real they were a hypocrite the church is not what it said it was look around there's a Samuel coming up out of the midst by the Spirit of the Lord because God loves the mother church and he won't let her die See, this is what we're experiencing is not just about styles. Our church isn't doing well just because we're the latest flavor. And our style is prophetic. And then another style is they're motivational. And then another style is, you know, they're good on teaching. And that this is just all just a a mixture of things God is going to fulfill his word there are actual things that are going to take place prophetically in the atmosphere I can't tell you when but I fully expect on any service for there to be a divine manifestation of the glory of God that this generation we've never seen I don't know if he's talking about a physical hand or if there's just such a presence of God in the place that we cannot stand because of the, of the overwhelming presence of the Lord. But I'm telling you, we're going to see things. I, I, I was, we were talking with, uh, praying about a lady who just, who's had stage four breast cancer and they cut her breasts off. And I told my wife, I said, I believe that God is going to begin to heal women that have had breast cancer and make their breasts grow back. Now, to the, to the carnal mind that can't have any faith, they're going to look at us and say, you are stark, raving, crazy. That kind of stuff doesn't happen. It doesn't happen in the world of unbelief, but it happens in the world of the people that know their God and are strong and do exploits. Smith or, or, or William Seymour, who was at Azusa Street, that God raised him up in Azusa Street. I read the story. One of the young ladies that was there wrote the story in her 80s, and she said, we had a man come into the service who had had his arm ripped out by a train accident. And she, he sat down, and she said, William Seymour began to pray for him. And she said, we watched, and over about 15-minute period, we watched his arm grow back out of the that shoulder and he had a fully functional whole arm by the power of God I come against this unbelief hallelujah that's trying to get a hold of you that some of you are literally fighting demons and the enemy is trying to come into you and say end it it's not gonna happen nothing's gonna change God doesn't heal he doesn't care about you listen some of us some of God's people in the earth right now are going through things that just don't test your faith but it's literally shaking the very foundation of whether you actually even believe Believe that there is a God when that enemy comes in like that that's when the Lord will raise up a standard against that you have to with your last breath of your body declare I will never hallelujah give up is there any hope in the bottom of your heart that when everything has gone wrong and there's nothing to shout about and you got so much pain and you're laying in bed at home because you cannot come to church around the world right now to those of you that are in your bedrooms uh, and in your countries uh, of, of oppression uh, to those of you that are in prison uh, to those of you that are then I begin to release I blow on you a spirit of the power and of the presence of God may it come through your television screen may it come through your computer screen may it come through your iPhone but in Jesus name every power of darkness and hell I bind to the name of the Lord and I declare that there is a Samuel anointing in the atmosphere by the power of God and the enemy will be the Feed it. And the day that she should have been celebrating 
the birth of this baby. Instead, they buried her with her sorry husband. See, you don't have to have sin in your life for the enemy to bury you. Unbelief will do it for you. And if that's why the Lord said, when I come back, he said, I'm not looking for big buildings or great talent, great orators, great singers, songwriters. He said, will I find faith? Because at the end of the day, and many of us have walked in such deep valleys, I remember holding a gun to my head, thinking, I can't live anymore. It's in those moments that the enemy only wants you to see Eli and a Phineas' husband and a bloody battlefield with 30,000 Israelites dead and the Ark of the Covenant captured. Because if he can get you to focus on that, then you will never see beyond the moment by the Spirit. Hallelujah. And sometimes, and I know this for myself, that the only thing that will ever reach down and get a hold of you and pull you out of the hell holes that the enemy tries to kill you in is the faith that you still have. Hallelujah. That when there's hardly anything left, there's no song anymore. The songbird's dead, and there's nothing to hope for, and you're in so much pain, you can't even hardly think straight, and your heart is broken, and you're dealing with all kinds of stuff. That's why the Lord, they said, Lord, increase our faith. He said, listen, he said, if you have faith just the size of a mustard seed, it'll pull you out of the deepest, darkest hole. Hallelujah. That when it looks like it's over and there is no hope, that little tiny bite of faith that's way down in the depths of your soul will begin to just begin to break forth and it will hold you until God can bring you up out of it by the Spirit of the Lord. And see, we're in a time right now in this nation that the enemy is trying to tell our nation and our nations around the world that listen it's over God has been captured and there is no hope and what life you did birth has been named Ichabod that was cursed when he was born and he's called the glory of the Lord has left that place but see God spared that young boy and in fact when you read 10 chapters later the Bible says that there was a priest who was the nephew of Ichabod it doesn't say it doesn't name the priest his daddy Ichabod's brother it names Ichabod and what Ichabod decided was my mama cursed me with my name but I refuse to let her A lot of men and women right now have come from other churches. You have been so disillusioned. You've been spit on, ridiculed, rejected, hurt, tore up, disillusioned. But listen, you can let that devil make you wane in your soul and say, I ain't going to church anymore. Or else you can either say, they didn't die for me and they don't determine where I go. So I'm going to get back in the saddle. I'm going to get back in the house of God. I will not let a hell.
have backslidden preacher determine my walk with God. I will not let somebody who wounded me and cursed me determine where I'm going in the Holy Ghost. But I shake it off in the name of the Lord. For you don't name me. For Jesus said when I name you, I give you a new name. Hallelujah. We're not named defeated. We're named overcomers. We're not named sick. We're named whole. We're not named the tail. We're named the head. We're not named the barber. We're named the lender. We are the people of the company of God. There is a Samuel anointing in the atmosphere. Long before anything took place in this nation, God birthed a Samuel in the spirit realm for such a time as this. You know, people say, well, they say, what do you do? I say, I pastor a church. They say, well, what kind of church do you pastor? Well, I pastor a Methodist church because I believe God has methods. I pastor a Baptist church. We're Baptists because we baptize. I pastor a Pentecostal church because we speak in tongues. And I pastor a charismatic church because we operate in the gifts. I'm Catholic because I believe in the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. So all we are in this church is Bible-believing people who look at, in fact, I'm Jewish because I believe there's a Messiah that's on his way back. And so you can label us all that you want, but at the end of the day, we're just men and women who walk by faith, by the power of the Holy Ghost. And listen, I don't care what you call yourself, you're welcome in this house if you are hungry for the glory of God. And if we are a hospital, if the church is supposed to be a place of deliverance and healing, then we need people to come in that need deliverance and healing. And this idea about, well, we just like everything in order. We don't want any smelly people, any funny looking people. We don't want any demon possessed people. That's what the church was raised up for. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to heal the broken heart to set the captives free, to preach deliverance, hallelujah, to those that are bound by the Spirit of God. And so in the hour that we're in, already God has it all figured out. because you have zero faith. Shut your door, sell your building, and give the money to missions. Because you don't believe in divine healing. healing. You don't believe in Psalms 91. You don't believe in the divine protection of God. You don't believe in any of that stuff. So there's no sense in coming back. And how can we have church if every one of us have a on and we're taking our temperature? I know I'm on a, on a pedestal here, but I'm sick of all of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me 4,400 people in the Ryman Auditorium, and we're going to touch each other just like we do on Southwest Airlines planes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, the world is not ready for the Samuel anointing that's getting ready to rise up by the Spirit of the Lord. You have given us your best shot. You have stolen from us for a solid year. You put a on us you've tried to shut us down you've tried to shut our churches down but at the end of the day here we are hallelujah in the house of the lord i hear a shout of the spirit of god by the anointing of the holy ghost out of all the things that finishes 
wife, I think, went through, I think, what broke her heart the most was because she mentions it twice. She said, the ark of God has been captured. It's funny, I got, I got an, uh, a, a, an email the other day. <clears throat> Not an email, I got a, a letter. <clears throat> and I opened it, and there was like $50, and it said, Please buy a stand for Pastor Kent so he does not have to bend over and get water off of the floor. <clears throat> Found a stand but it cost fifty thousand dollars. <clears throat> no, I'm just kidding. She says this, she said the Ark of the Covenant has been captured. And to her, when the Ark of the Covenant had been captured. It was the final piece that said there's no hope. But she did not understand that there was a prophet in the house that wasn't done. And God, you hear me by the Spirit, we're all upset about corrupt politicians. I'm more upset about corrupt preachers that have stood on our platforms and stood on our airways and have raped our people and they're more interested in shearing the sheep than they are saving them. And so, the Lord, <clears throat> he raises up a Samuel and the Bible says this and this is what we do. face and the Bible said that its head and its hands were cut off and it's laying before in front of the Ark of the Covenant now you cannot capture the presence of God that's in the earth and especially in the United States of America and stick it in a room of perversion and ungodliness and unholiness and political corruption and say we won because God is going to get involved and when the God gets involved he doesn't need man to do it hear me thus saith the Lord there is a divine intervention that's getting ready to take place in the United States of America and the Lord says it will not be man that does it because no man will receive the glory for what I'm getting ready to do and when I do it it will be supernatural and and even the media says the Lord will look at it and say how did this come about but I am still God and in this hour hallelujah the Lord is releasing a recovery of what the enemy has tried to steal and either we can die like Phineas's wife and throw in the towel and watch our loved ones stand at our grave and talk about what we used to be or else we can rise to the occasion by the Holy Ghost and say yes I'm grieving over my nation yes I'm grieving over the situation of the church but I do not throw in the towel and we do not concede because the last round has not yet been fought the last song has not yet been sung the last prophecy has not yet been released the last preaching has not yet been sent out the last service has not yet been conducted and God is just getting warmed up so in the middle of it looks like a funeral get ready says the Lord for there is resurrection anointing by the Spirit of the Lord and God is going to come through.